Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. Today I'm going to talk about 3D PIV uncertainty quantification. According to the topic, let's start with what is 3D PIV and why we need uncertainty quantification for those measurements. 3D PIV is a flow measurement technique and it can be very advantageous when you need instantaneous velocity field in 3D domain, which is mainly the case in turbulent shear flows. It can have clinical applications like studying turbulent cardiovascular flows, can be used to study flow around block bodies and turbulent wakes, to investigate transitional and turbulent jets, and to better understand the boundary layers. Either the measurement is used for clinical decision making, design purposes, or as a validation for numerical simulation, reporting the uncertainty is a must. For example, the clinician cannot rely on the measurement to decide about his or her patient's life unless he or she knows what the error could be. This is when it comes to the uncertainty measurement to assess the statistical significance of 3D PIV error sources. But what is the uncertainty? Uncertainty or sigma is actually not an error, but an estimate of a bound within which the true error is expected to lie. And a standard uncertainty is defined as the standard deviation of error histogram. To quantify the uncertainty for 3D PIV, we should know the procedure and error sources in each step. To do 3D PIV, we have multiple cameras, and each camera will give us a 2D intensity field of the object. Based on the camera configuration and calibration and self-calibration process, we will create the mapping function. And this mapping function can be used to create reconstructed intensity field from 2D images. At the end, these reconstructed volumes will go through the correlation process to obtain the, the displacement of the particle pattern. As you can see, we have a lot of error sources in each step. All these error sources, their combination and propagation through the measurement chain makes 3D PIV measurement uncertainty a non-trivial task. For example, since equations in mapping function are undetermined, we will have some ghost particles which are randomly added to the frames and can affect correlation. So far, no one has been implemented uncertainty quantification for 3D PIV. However, we hypothesize that the methods for 2D PIV, which only includes correlation process, can apply to 3D PIV as well, since calibration and reconstruction uncertainty will propagate to intensity fields and cross-correlation. So in this study, we reviewed the 2D uncertainty methods to see which one adjusts more for our purposes. We can categorize uncertainty methods into two main groups. Indirect methods predict that displacement uncertainty by calibrating the variation of uncertainty to different parameters. Such calibration is developed from simulated images and may not be sensitive to a specific error source for a given experiment. This has been mentioned also in the literature that direct methods are more sensitive. Direct methods estimate the uncertainty directly based on image or correlation plane. Presently, there are three direct methods available. First, image matching or IM. In brief, IM estimates the uncertainty using a statistical analysis of the disparity vector. But what is disparity? If we have frame one and two, and we shift back frame two, the mismatch between the particle is called disparity. For a perfect shift, this should be zero. So this is representative of the error. The performance of this method is sensitive to the accuracy of the particle position estimation and deteriorates with increasing seating density and noise. Second is, cor cor is correlation statistic, which relates the uncertainty to the autocovariance of intensity field. And since it's going to be computationally expensive in 3D domain, we haven't worked on it. The last method is moment of correlation or MC. For an ideal shift, Cross-correlation peak can be represented by a Dirac function representative of the shift and Gaussian representative of the particle shift. And any deviation in the peak is due to error sources. Hence, in MC, we will remove all the particle shapes information to get the phase-only cross-correlation, which is directly related to the PDF of all possible displacement and the uncertainty is defined as a spread of this peak, this little peak. So in this work, we try to extend IM and MC to 3D, and the methodologies are explained in next slides. 
As mentioned, I am estimates the uncertainty using a statistical analysis of the disparity. To calculate the disparity, raw images are going through iterative window deformation to obtain matched volumes. Then to find potential particle per position, we multiply the intensity field of matched volumes and the local maximums are where particle pairs are. Then this initial position is used in the extended 3D three-point Gaussian fitting to find the exact particle location in each frame. And the residual mismatch between two positions is disparity. We will ensemble the disparity of all particle pairs and by statistical analysis of disparity distribution, ion uncertainty in each direction is defined by this equation. And it can be written for all u, v, and w velocity components. As mentioned in the MC, the uncertainty is related to the standard deviation of the PDF. To get the PDF, we will remove the particle image diameter information from the correlation volume, which is in fact the phase part of the correlation volume in Fourier domain. As you can see, the image PDF bit is very small, so if we directly apply any fitting, the results are not going to be accurate. To overcome this issue, we convolve the PDF with a Gaussian kernel, which its diameter is dynamically estimated from the cross-correlation peaks V. Let's call the convolved volume C. The method assumes the PDF to be Gaussian, and accordingly being the convolution of two Gaussians, C is also a Gaussian. Hence, the sum of covariance matrices for Gaussian convolution is used to find the PDF's peaks diameter. So we will use our implemented 3D Gaussian List the square feet to find the whole covariance metric terms from the convolved volume C, and knowing the covariance of a Gaussian kernel, we can find covariance of the PDF and accordingly its diameter. However, this diameter should be projected into main axis. We will find the rotation matrix of the PDF by eigen analysis of the covariance matrix and use it to find PDF's projected diameter. The standard deviation of the PDF is defined as one-fourth of its diameter. And to report random error, we need to normalize the standard deviation we found. Since all the bright pixels are contributing to the correlation plane and PDF, the normalization factor will be number of effective pixels, which is the number of effective particles, or MI, multiplied by the volume of each particle. At the end, the MC uncertainty is defined as combination of random error from the uh, previous steps and the bias error, which is coming from the PDF speaks location calculated by the least square fitting. We have tested both methods with fully reconstructed Tomo PIB data. We use the Stokes vortex read. Volumes are reconstructed by Davis using a standard MART through six iterations. Reconstructed volumes are correlated and processed using PRANA, our in-house developed code. The seeding density is 0.025 particle per pixels, and we use three different noise levels, 1, 5, and 10 percent, to see the sensitivity to the noise. The processing parameters are as the table. We perform multi-grid deform approach with a standard cross-correlation. We used four passes, having validation and a smoothing in the first three passes and calculating the uncertainty in the last pass. Once we generated artificial data set, we have performed PIB processing to calculate the measurement error and compare that to the estimated uncertainties. With dimension settings for each case, we have more than 12,000 measurements to make sure the error and uncertainty results have been converged. It has been established that with a reliable uncertainty method, the RMS of the error and uncertainty should be very close. Here you can see the results for the case with 5%. The black line is the PDF of the error, the orange is the PDF of the IM, and the yellow is the PDF of the MC uncertainty, and these three plus corresponds to X, Y, and Z directions. The vertical line corresponds to the RMS of the error and uncertainties, and you can see the RMS of the IM is very close to the error, and MC is under predicting. Also, here is the Monte Carlo analysis for noise level in X, Y, and Z directions. RMS of the IM is very close to the error, and it can estimate the RMS of error with 2% accuracy, but its performance deteriorates for higher noise levels in Z directions. RMS of the MC is following the trend of the RMS of the error, which means it has reasonable sensitivity, but it has a bias error and it is under predicting it. 
It can be due to the normalization factor or least square performance, and it needs to be more investigated. I'll leave you with the conclusion, and if you have any further questions, please email me.